Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to con uh, continue our visiting of past videos that have uh, received the most views and expanded upon some of the ideas we had in part one. This is part two of Don't Set Your Speakers on the Floor. <clears throat> Comb filter effect. I'm not going to define it because we've, we've talked about it a hundred uh, million times. Speaker boundary interference effect. When the speaker is close to a boundary surface, a wall, floor, doesn't matter. You know, you're going to get pressure issues. You're going to get reflection issues. This is reflection. Uh, SBIE is mostly pressure. Floor listening reflection. I mean, we have speakers on the floor. We have a chair on the floor listening. So we're going to get this constantly, right? Okay. That's why we always put sound absorption there. So pressure wave, low frequency energy from the subwoofer. If it's a rig here, you're going to get this pressure wave. So it's going to cause issues. So vibration transmission from the speaker to the floor. I mean, I've been in situations where the floor actually starts to move because of the energy from the driver. That's why we elevate the speaker off the floor with our platforms. It does a lot of things. It smooths out response. Attenuates, absorbs low frequency energy. This is our carbon technology here. Okay. Attenuates, elevates, and isolates. So it's a vibration transmission. If you, just like in noise, if you want to stop the noise transmission, you put a barrier between you and the source of the noise because you're the receiver. Here we put a barrier in a way. Uh, it's a sound absorption technology between the speaker and the floor to reduce the vibration transmission. Last thing you want to do is excite that floor and get it moving. So it turns into a whole big speaker. We don't need it. Okay. Movement is noise, period. That's how it works. Everything that moves makes noise, it seems like, especially in small rooms. All room input is air based. Everything we do to this room, any room creates air. So Anything we do to it, we live in it, we play music in it, whatever we do in it, we're introducing air into it, right? An air rate that sometimes is treatable, sometimes is not, sometimes is partially treatable. It just depends on usage, okay? There's three parts to any speaker sound. What are they? We should know that by now. There's the driver, right? The cabinet and the electronics. Those are the three things that you hear. That come out to your ears. It's a combination of the electronics, the cabinet, and the driver. Those are the three elements. So if you control the vibrations in the cabinet, you'll get a better sound quality. Sound quality, remember, I don't know how many times I've said this, is doing a lot of little things, but more importantly, doing them in the correct order. Set up. Setting your speakers on the floor, setting your chair on the floor, Setup is really, real critical in small rooms because we don't have a lot of margin for air. Remember, all input is air into the room. So we don't have a lot of room to make a lot of mistakes. We make one mistake, that can have an impact on another. That's why I say sound quality is a combination of doing a lot of little things in the correct order. It's like steps, you know. You have to take each one in order to get to the higher one. See, if you skip one here, could have, you could have some trouble. So, the elevator to success is out of order. You must take the stairs one step at a time. Same thing in acoustics. You have to follow a procedure, develop a strategy. These are all tactics inside of a bigger strategy that you hopefully have sat down and given some thought to. Don't set your speakers on the floor. Part two. Hope this helps. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video, and if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to, so please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions, and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum. And we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis, so that'll help you. Thank you.